The Battlefield franchise is an old titan of the shooter genre, and the Bad Company games are possibly some of the best in the entire series. So this news might be pretty exciting to Battlefield fans. According to YouTube user Almighty Dak, who quite accurately leaked info about Battlefield 1 last year, Battlefield Bad Company 3 is on the way. Almighty Dak posted a video on his YouTube channel claiming to have insider information on the new game, which is apparently in the works at DICE and EA. He says the campaign will be set during mid and post Vietnam conflict, but will not include the Cold War, but the campaign is said to not be, quotes, entirely historically accurate. He says the multiplayer will have the following modes, Conquest, Rush, Operations, Domination, Team Deathmatch, and a new 5v5 game mode. And as for the game's maps, they'll be less about all-out warfare and instead focus on tighter gameplay with maps similar to those found in Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, like Oasis, Harvest Day, and Grand Bazaar. As for the guns, Bad Company 3 will feature both Vietnam and Cold War era guns, with gun customization returning to apparently the more robust form last seen in Battlefield 4. On top of that, character gun and vehicle customization will be improved upon what was found in Battlefield 4. Speaking of vehicles, players can expect modern tanks, LAVs, helicopters, as well as many others that will feature in the game. And as for kits, there will be engineer, support, assault and recon classes similar to that found in Bad Company 2. He says the game will have a faster tempo than Battlefield 1 and a higher skill gap and overall increase in longevity of the game. Finally, Almighty Dax suggests there's a chance the game will not contain microtransactions. Quotes, Battlefield Bad Company 3 is not following in the steps of Battlefront 2. Looking at the potential battle packs, much like Battlefield 4, but this could entirely be scrapped due to the controversy surrounding Battlefront 2. The game, he says, will be announced and revealed at E3. So, pretty good gaming. Why are you reporting on rumours and speculation and leaks and stuff? Because this guy is pretty reliable. Yeah, well, I mean, been. Battlefield 1, he predicted it. Like March 2016, and the game came out, I think, October, and he was pretty much spot on. So, I mean, in the past, he has been quite reliable, and why would he taint that reputation by just telling a bunch of bullshit about Battlefield Bad Company 3? One time he was right, is pretty much all he's got, you know? Listening to his details and, and everything he's got to say, it sounds all believable, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I guess what purpose has he got to life? He's already been spot on in the past, unless that one time he was spot on, and then he's using that to troll us in the future, but... If that's the case, what the f are you doing? So yeah, let's just, I mean, this is rumors, this is speculation. Let's not get too excited. Let's not get carried away. Mentioning excitement. I'm not that excited about this. I'm a huge Battlefield fan. I was, and Battlefield Bad Company 2 is my favorite Battlefield game. Like hands down easily, right? This should be really exciting to me, and it's just not. I don't know what it is. It's Star Wars Battlefront 2, maybe. Yeah, is it, it is. EA? It's Battlefield <laughs> 1 as well, a little bit. I did enjoy Battlefield 1, but it just didn't feel Battlefieldy. I don't know what it is. It just it's just lost something. And uh, unless they can really go back to what was great about Bad Company 2, I can't see this being particularly exciting for for me anyway. And it's just not the kind of news that I'm that I'm you know frothing at the mouth at. Is that not usually anger though? Is that not frothing at the mouth? Is like. I think you can, yeah. Froth with excitement? Salivating. I'm not frothing. Let's move on. Also in the news, the New Zealand's Department for International Affairs has delivered its verdict on whether or not loot boxes are gambling. Here's what the department's licensing compliance manager Trish Millward said on the matter. Quote, the department is of the view that loot boxes do not meet the legal definition of gambling. So that's that then. New Zealand has declared loot boxes are not gambling. Well, at least for now. Millward did continue to say that they will, quote, continue to follow the international discussion around loot boxes, which is a line similar to that of the UK's Gambling Commission for a short while before they released another slightly stronger statement just a few weeks ago. That New Zealand verdict contrasts quite heavily with the Australian state of Victoria, who said loot boxes would constitute gambling under their laws, while similar bodies in Belgium are still trying to decide either way. I do kind of feel like the conversation's moved on from is it gambling or is it not? I think it's yeah. now, uh, you're looking at what Chris Lee's doing, the uh, Hawaiian uh, US legislator, he's, he's kind of, he's looking at, you know, is it bad or not? It doesn't matter if it's, it's gambling or, or not. And he, I think he kind of agrees. I think he does say it probably isn't legally uh, gambling, but it's still bad. And I yeah. think, I feel like that's where the conversation has gone now. And that's why, you know, the UK Gambling Commission has, has moved its statement along as well. So I imagine that New Zealand will want to move things along as well. Interestingly, there's just these countries around the world just kind of piping up going, yeah, no, it's not gambling. <laughs> or, or, yeah, it is gambling. I just like that there's just sounding their kind of two cents and how it would affect games in their, in their respective countries and stuff. Yeah, it's just another country giving another verdict on 
Loot box gambling, so we just keep it up to date. Elsewhere, as the world gets ready for another Star Wars movie, eager fans who also happen to be owners of No Man's Sky on the PC can fly the Millennium Falcon now. Han Solo's iconic ship appears in the game as part of the More Ships for Atlas Rising mod, which actually adds 12 new ships to the game, including the Falcon and some other things like a pod from Phantom Menace's One Good Scene. Of course, because No Man's Sky is procedurally generated with a near infinite amount of planets, in theory, the chances of finding Han Solo's ship are quite low, so you really will need to keep an eye out. And a little word of warning for anyone wanting to install the mod, the creator said, quote, Uninstalling the mod will result in a crash to desktop if or when any save game tries to load the ships from the uninstalled mod. So there is that. There I was really excited for this news when I read it because I thought it was official. Oh, what? Yeah, no Man's Sky have signed on with Disney? Yeah. That's crazy. Why would they take on? I mean, they've only got one like burning car crossed over here. You know, EA. Why are they going to go with Hello Games? Why are they just picking up all... Oh, it's a mod. Yeah. Ah, There's okay. some nice ships there, though. So even though No Man's Sky was pitching itself as kind of like a very 70s heavy sci-fi era, a lot of fans of sci-fi, a lot of fans of Star Wars have this, you know, big crossover. Mm -hmm. So there are people that are going to be wanting to fly around their mostly empty planets with the Millennium Falcon. I mean, what are you going to do in that Falcon? Those are a lot of... Some <laughs> excellent points there. <laughs> So what do you reckon then? Do you think Battlefield Bad Company's the sort of shot in the arm the Battlefield series needs? Or should DICE just give up at this point? Let us know down in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new around here. There's plenty more video content materials here on the screen. There's also a link to our Patreon if you want to support the channel. And until then, we'll see you in the next video.